Oh, hey guys, how you doing? Sorry about a little bit of light. I'm staying here in front of the house. I had some of you I've spoke to have asked me to do a video on this to help you guys out, okay? Now, I just want to make this very clear. I am not a professional. I don't do this for a living. I did this for my own homestead. So, it's up to you. Do your research. Please do your research. And always keep a fire extinguisher in the homestead. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about the installation of a wood stove on your homestead. Um, you know, I did a lot of research before we decided to do this. I wanted to make sure that, you know, we knew what we were doing. We knew what the parameters were and the safety factor of it. You know, I have a lot of people have asked me a lot of questions about modular homes or, or their tiny houses sheds or homes all i can do is tell you guys how we did ours how you guys do yours is totally up to you i don't want to be held responsible if something goes wrong i just want to make that really really clear <laughs> all right so let's let's get to talking about this now all right now the first thing you guys you guys are going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that you buy either a roof kit or a wall mount kit for your wood stove. Now, a roof kit will come with a, uh, a roof flange that goes on top of your roof. They'll go up there and you'll screw it down or nail it down in and you'll silicone it with a black high temp silicone or you do out the wall. I did mine out the wall. So this video is going to be pretty much about what you do coming out of the house. All right, so let's uh, go in here and get a little bit closer. All right, guys, so here is the kit. The, the, the kit consistency of what it, will, what it will hold. You're going to get a T. I call it insulated T because it looks like a T. You'll get a small insulated pipe that you'll be able to connect your inside pipe too, which is a thin wall, not insulated, it's a thin wall pipe. Then you're gonna get your mounting bracket for your wall mount. Now, as you can see back here, I took four by fours and mounted mine up against four by fours to pull it off the wall to make sure I miss this edge because otherwise it doesn't stick out far enough to go past. So you're gonna have to do that. It'll, it'll draw it in too far and it won't work well. I also, when I did this, I made sure that you have your clean out set up. Right here is our clean out set up. We got it all set up for our, for our clean outs. So when we need to do our clean outs, do our clean outs. We'll run our clean out brush up there. We'll go all the way up the stack. Now, make sure when you're doing this that you have this put together correctly. Now, that will all twist and lock together so you're going to want to make sure it twists and you'll, you'll hear you'll feel get real tight like it's locking in place pull on it real good you'll know it's it's locked in so one of the most important parts of doing this is the mounting in the wall okay two things make sure the top and the bottom of your wall below that is insulated top and bottom so that's the part that is sitting right there. That part is very, 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 very important. Now what that does is that allows the air to get around it. But also when your pipes come in there, they hook together and it's, it's like a, a, a super vent. It vents the air around that pipe because it's in the wall. You don't want that to be all, all put in there super, super tight. You don't want to put boards up against it um, as far as the pipe itself. The super vent, you'll build a box inside your wall. Um, I wish I could have done this when I did the install on this because it would have been a lot easier to show you guys how we did it. All right, so let's talk about the tools that you're gonna need for the job. All right, one, you're gonna need a wrench, two wrenches. You're gonna need a screw gun with a Phillips head screw. You're gonna need some two by fours to build your box around your super vent that's sitting right there and you're going to need a hex head to do to put to assemble it to put together 
everything else is it's pretty it's pretty simple guys it's really not hard just make sure when you do it that it's level make sure that you take your time and you do it correctly they do give you mounting brackets right there you'll see it come mounting bracket it'll come with two mounting brackets thinking that you're going up a high area or, or a steep roof or a longer wall i only had to use one now this is really important to not have what i call blowback all right what it is and i'm going to take you up there i'm going to show you but what it is is that you want to make sure that the chimney that you install on your wood stove your pellet anything is above your ridge line up top so let's go show you that all right guys so my my roof line is right about right here on my pipe now you'll see I have one, two, and then I have three, and I have the cap. All right, that middle one is one that we got this year that we put on. It's 24 inches. It gets us past our ridge cop, our vent line on our tiny home. If you don't do that, you're going to have what I call blowback. And what's going to happen is the air is going to come off the roof, and it's going to push down and push the smoke from your wood stove into your house. That's a no-no, you don't want that. You, if you have it past it, what'll happen is that wind will come across, it'll pick up and it'll carry it away. That's what you want. That's the correct way of doing it. Last year, we just missed our ridge line by maybe four inches. And we thought, oh, four inches won't make a difference. Let me tell you, four inches makes a big difference. Did we get a lot of smoke in our place every once in a while? Yeah, we did, depending on how windy it was. Now that we got that on there, we absolutely get nothing. It just draws it right out like it's nothing, which is awesome. We love it. But, you know, it's, it's one of those things about owning a tiny home that you're going to have to deal with if you're in cold weather. All right, guys. So you kind of got a basics of the install um you know just really take your time and do do your research on this on how you're going to do it and make sure that you take your time this is not a rush rush factor now i'm going to give you the key on how to save a ton of money on my wood stove and if you can just wait until end of february just wait until, well, I'd say middle of February is when we got ours. Wait until middle of February and then start looking for your wood stove. Because our wood stove that we got in there ran anywhere from eight to $999. I got it for 500 bucks because we waited. So if you're smart, you'll wait and you'll get the same deal that we got or I don't know if it would be the same deal, but you'll get a deal like we got and save you some money on your homestead. I'm all about savings. I'm all about repurposing. I'm all about reusing. And it's one of those things when you live on a farm, a homestead, whatever, you're always trying to figure out ways of saving money because we all don't have money. You know, we can't just go out and spend money all the time. But, you know, if you have any further questions on this, and would like to ask me anything on the install from the inside or that's the outside install please don't hesitate send me a message in the comments down below and i will definitely get back to you i will not you know just brush or blow you off i want to help you out you know i want you to be successful like us um we we've done really really well out here with this and i just have to say that wood stove that we got heats 2,000 square foot home up we got it and guess what we live in a 600 square foot home now you might say holy cow but I'll tell you what I much prefer to be too warm than too cold if it gets too warm in there and it has trust me it has we just crack open a couple of windows it brings the temp down to where we're comfortable and we're good to go another thing is too is it burns and conserves more wood because I don't need that much to fill a 2,000 square foot area. We got 600 feet here. It's only going to do 600 feet. Wow. Well, guys, I hope this was 
informative to you. I hope this helped you out. And I'm sorry that, you know, I couldn't show you step by step by step, but I can kind of lead you in the right direction in the right way. Um, just make sure that you make a list of everything you're going to need. Um, you can go to our Swisher Homestead Facebook page, or you can go to our Swisher Family Farm page on Facebook, or you're on our YouTube page. You can put it in the comments down below and, you know, ask some questions. I have no problem. If I don't know the answer for them, you know, I'll do research for you and I'll find out. Uh, that's the only thing I can do, to be honest with you. Well, at this point, guys, I'm so happy that you guys took time out to watch our video. God bless you all. Be safe. Don't forget, get a fire extinguisher in your homestead when you're doing these wood stoves. Just in case, because you never know. Safety first. At that point, we'll see you later. God bless you guys. Ooh, the acorns are dropping. Until next time, see ya.